We're going to be talking about the French Revolution from 1789 to 1815, which does include Napoleon's War on Europe. Just to give you some idea about how society operated, they really did have a class system. And again, it really stems from what happens in feudalism. Here's a definition of that if you need a quick review. Uh, but you will see that basically the peasants pretty much don't have rights. They have to continuously pay taxes. And that system will develop into the three estates with the peasants doing the same sort of thing they did under feudalism. At the top of our system is King Louis the 16th. You remember a lot about him from the video. It talked a lot about his personal lives, his personal life and challenges. Here's the dates that he ruled. He will at least keep a system in place that gave privileges to the first and second estates, but he really makes no attempt to make them pay taxes, and really you see they control most of the wealth and the land, and the people that are paying for most of his luxuries, and especially his wives' luxuries, really are the peasants. At the top of our hierarchy in France, really, it's the clergy. Now understand, if you are a parish peasant, you are our parish priest, you are pretty much living like the peasants that go to your church. We're talking more about the bishops, that the high ups in the church are going to control most of the land. You can see what percentage of the population that they are, but they paid 0% in taxes. They collected teas, uh, which are required donations, and they did, again, provide services to the people as far as, you know, parish schools and relief services. Moving on to our second estate, you will see these are people that are relatives and friends of the royal family. Um, these are people who have their position because their dad had their position, because their grandpa had the position. It really is something you're born into. And a lot of, of Europe, the Europe royalty, they were intermarrying, thinking, marrying your cousin, your, you know, your half-brother, th things like that went on. But they will control 20 to 25 percent of the land in France, and they paid zero percent taxes. And they're going to continue to demand grain, livestock, and labor from the peasants. So you can see how, um, if you're part of the third estate, especially the peasants, you're going to be pretty upset with this situation and with your uh, plot in life. Moving on to our third estate, the commoners of France made up 98% of the population. So you're, you're, you're lo we're looking at you know over 25 million people. They own 65% of the land, and you see here they paid 100% of the taxes. It is a regressive tax, which means it doesn't matter if you were poor, you still paid the same amount of tax. They got really no privileges, and they were divided into three groups based on their employment and wealth. Um, like I said, you did have some wealthy, you know, some middle class people in the third estate, but this is anybody else that's not a member of the clergy or not related to the monarch. So basically, the commoners, everything they were making pretty much was going to someone else. A teeth went to the church. Uh, the corva was oftentimes like there was a public works project that they had to construct a bridge. Every peasant had to go and complete work on there. Or if it was a tail, you would, it was a tax levied on the common people, either by the clergy, nobility, or king. So these people are paying lots of taxes. And even within the third estate, understand there are, you know, different rankings of people. The bourgeoisie are the middle class. You can see they're made up a little over four and a half million people. They have the bankers, the factory owners, the merchants, the professionals, and the skilled artisans. These people are going to be the ones that are really going to be speaking for a revolution, and they're going to get other people below them, like the peasants, to, to really buy into that idea. You can understand uh, many members of the bourgeoisie were wealthy. They were just as wealthy as the nobility. They were educated and they really believed in the enlightenment. They believed in ideas such as liberty and equality, but they still did not receive the privileges of the first or second estate. The second group of the third estate, these are urban laborers, tradespeople, their apprentices, their servants, they're poverty stricken, they're often unemployed, and they really, really needed that flour to make bread for food. If you remember from the video, two pounds of bread are consumed really each day. So people really need this flour to make this bread. Oh my goodness, sad looking fellow here. Uh, going on to the third group, it's the agricultural peasants. These are the people that are working the fields. These are very similar to the serfs in Russia, made up 80% of the population. You can see, you know, close to 21 million. They paid 50% of their income to the nobles, clergy, and the king's intendants, which again, these are government officials that work for the king, and they start to become discontent with their low status and their high tax burden, anybody would. 
Oh, look how sad he is. Uh, just again to, to kind of show you the different percentage of the population, you can see how the third estate really is just plagued with this government taxation. And you can see how if they, they're going to realize if they band together, they can easily overcome the first and second. Just to give you a context for the revolution, you can see here uh, the enlightenment, the ec economic crisis, and social injustice and inequality. So we'll talk about those. Enlightenment ideas, you should know about these. Um, this is, again, a time of enlightenment really affected Many people in America, like Thomas Jefferson, it really was a cause also for the American Revolution. But if you believed in the Enlightenment ideas, you thought that people had a right to keep their property. They could speak and publish freely. They had a right to representative government. They had a right to justice trial by jury. And they had a right to revolt if they felt like their rights were not um, being insured. Also, social justice and inequality. Oh my gosh, what's going on here? You can see, um, we'll look at these different estates, and many of you guys can guess, who is this poor fellow right here that is just has the other two people riding on him here? Let's see who this is. This is the third estate. They carry the first and second estates. Oh my gosh, poor guy. And then the first estate is, is supported, really, by the third estate. Moving on to the second estate, which you would know is the nobility. They're supported by the third estate. So the third estate, this poor guy here is carrying everybody on his back not a good situation for him at all. Let's talk about Marie Antoinette, who just becomes just a source of frustration, anger. I mean, they want to rip her to pieces. And again, you know from the video, this should all be a review for you, that her marriage really was a political alliance and her job was to have children. And she really just did not care. Um, she didn't seem to care enough about the people or she really didn't try to change things when things were going very bad for her and her family. Um, and if you guys remember Maria Teresa, it was her mother. Her mother was considered really an enlightened ruler, and especially her brother was too. Um, I guess she was spoiled. We don't know really what happened to her. Um, she just was really disconnected with her position. And again, most of you know that she spoke no friend. She brought a lot of money. She didn't conceive her first seven years, and she was just really disconnected and really remained at Versailles and didn't really care to go see the people. Oh, and the, and the hairdos, what's going on? Um, definitely four or five feet tall here. What are you putting in your hair? And again, you can maybe compare that. Maybe Lady Gaga is trying to, to copy some of the, the hairdos of Marie Antoinette. We don't really know. Here's some more pictures of her. Oh, my, ship in your hair. That Somebody should try that for sure. Um, many of the, me the members of the third state, they had absolutely no rights or privileges. Uh, as you guys saw in the video, many were sent to the dungeons of the Bastille in Paris for just minor infra infractions, complaints, torture occurred there. You could pretty much go to prison for, really, you wouldn't even know. You went there, you didn't know how long you were going to stay. That doesn't look like fun at all. These are, again, it's a painting of the Bastille and what goes on there. Please don't forget the economic crisis that we, we really talked about a little bit with the American Revolution. But in America, we cannot forget France really helped us. If you remember, um, during the Seven Years' War, Britain and France were fighting. And the Seven Years' War was really started in North America by George Washington, who was, again, a British subject. He started a fight with France. He was sent by a Virginia company uh, really to get to gain land and claim more land from Britain and they got into this fight. Um, you see that France will lose this war and they will lose Canada, Louisiana and portions of the Caribbean. Really they will lose land um, up to the Mississippi River and so because of this costly war Lewis is uh, forced to raise taxes and if you again compare that to what happens in England, George III, because of this war, even though England won, is also forced to raise taxes, which leads him on a collision course with the colonists. Then we have the American Revolution. So this war was not a good idea. Yes, and we can't forget about the bubonic plague. And because that subsides, and you can see the last outbreak was in 1720, 100,000 people will die. It ran its course in Europe, so you're going to see a rapidly growing population. And not enough resources for these people. And again, more people, less bread. You will see, again, that two pounds of bread that we heard about. And so you see the price of flour 
is going to its increase will directly affect the French people. And as you guys know, the price will double. 1788 and 1789. 1789 is the start really of the revolution. Angry mobs will loot grain stores, flour mills, and bakeries in search of this basic ingredient just so they can eat. And also, too, you've got the economic problem of severe winter season. You have many people that are literally starving. Okay, so seeking revenge, uh, Louis' grandfather, again, if you remember, had lost to Britain during the Seven Years' War. So you will see when Britain is faced with their own revolution, and again, their civil it was really a civil war at the time, France is saying, mm, I wonder what we can do to get back at, at Britain. So France really, truly had motive, but they absolutely helped America win its independence from Britain. Again, if you can see the figure there, $260 million they spent. That's also going to be a huge financial strain on the French economy. And Americans seem to forget sometimes um, about, again, the, the help that the French gave the Americans during the revolution. All right, things are pretty bad for King Louis. He's got to get taxes to replenish the treasury. Absolutely does. So he calls the Estates General first mistake. Because as you, as you know, when these people start meeting and talking, things are going to go terribly wrong uh, for, for Louis. All right, so we're going to talk about phase one. Seemed like a really great idea to call the estates general. Not so much. Um, if you remember the first and second estate, they could always outvote the, the third estate. And you can imagine that they're not going to want to vote for taxes, especially if it involved them actually paying taxes. So this doesn't seem like a really good idea at all. And you see a National Assembly will form. Emmanuel here had a great idea that representatives of the third estate should bypass the veto power of the first and second estates, and they should rename themselves the National Assembly. And the third estate, they thought that was a great idea, and they will sweep away absolute monarchy and beginning really the path to true political revolution. Be sure to also take the quiz on this video.